Hello everybody and welcome to Women of Zao by Plot Twist Studios. I know it's been a hot minute since I've uploaded. You probably thought I was dead. Well, I'm very much alive. Uh, it's been pretty hectic last couple weeks. I moved into a new place and you know how that goes. That's you know, very hectic and all that jazz. But now I'm back and ready for action. Here we are. This is by Plot Twist Studios, which I believe I already mentioned. That's currently in early access. You can buy it right now for $20. And it includes a default ending, but the other endings of the game are being worked on, as the developer has told me. So here we are. Let's take a look at the settings real quick. See, see what we're working with here. Okay, this is definitely made in RimPy. I know that because I have also tried to develop in RimPy a while ago. I tried my crack at it. Voice volume, I guess there's voice acting. Sound volume, I'll leave that down. I'll leave the voices up. What do we have for extras? There's CG's characters, okay. Oh, oh, spoilers. Oh, lost characters. There are multiple routes, or multiple romances, I should say, in this game. Um, I, I'm digging the artwork. It looks really nice. Really nice. So, new game. This game utilizes data from previous saves. Uh, yeah, I don't have any of them, so I'm sure why not. And I gotta move my microphone. Here we go. Does this have controller support? Let's check it out, shall we? That used to be a thing I used to do back in the day. Enjoy the game. Well, my controller wants to uh, sync up. It's wireless, by the way. I use a wireless Xbox One controller. It does the job pretty well. Because as much as people love mouse and keyboards, not every genre of the game works for it. Not every genre of game has worked best for them. This obviously is one of those genres where keyboard is perfectly fine, but I like to try it out anyway. It doesn't want to sync, so I guess we'll never know. Enjoy the game. Will do. It's early access, as I mentioned. True ending and various bad endings, which would normally be available on New Game Plus, are not available. So, what is this game about? I don't actually know. Oh. It's all right to be afraid, child. Their blood is on your hands. But pawns in a very long game. I suggested that you see how I do things. Jenna. You can't hurt her. I don't know. Artwork looked good. And on a Twitter post, I retweeted, liked it, as I like if oh. I do on Twitter. The developer got in contact with me, asked me if I wanted a key to the game. I said yes. Yes, I want that I could get five keys of the game. I'm like, no, one is fine. I guess I could have gave the other ones away, but I decided not to be greedy. I don't know how to pronounce this, so Jenna, Zena, maybe. I'll just say Zena. It's probably not how that's pronounced. Jenna. That's probably Jenna. Yeah, that sounds. That sounds right. Is your daughter all right, Lady Majuri? She will be. Inform the matriarch that Jenna will see her shortly. The guard nodded. My lady, she walked away, leaving you and your mother alone in the grand entry hall of the castle. You were having one of those dreams again, weren't you? I am recording, right? Yes, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Nah, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes I don't want to talk about the dreams I have. Very well. Keep that mindset during the competition. Anyone could use your affliction against you. I won't have my daughter experimented on. Not for that. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Just take care of yourself. Anyone that tries to get my way will pay. Uh, are we vengeful? I don't know. Look at that. Your mother gives a small nod. She doesn't look like she'll be smiling anytime soon. I'll be fine. Keep your head up and you will too. Hey, can I use the space bar? Oh yeah, I can use space bar. That's so much easier. Because how my, how my microphone is, I have to like reach under my cord that connects the microphone and I don't want to like, move it too much. So space bar is perfectly fine. If you prove that you're worthy of Lady Zuna's inheritance, what you do next may very well be observed by history. You may be in Zanaska now, but the people of Jalil will be watching. Make your home island proud. Okay. Jenazawa, her life energy will influence the direction of her story with every choice she makes. However, it may not always impact her smaller decisions. 
During such times, personality stands down like choices and other actions and prior events will determine what she can or cannot do next turn. Sorry, next, sorry. Next turn. What is this? So many options may become unavailable. Decisions affecting major intervention and story will remain open for the player to choose regardless of your stats. Okay. Okay, we're not ruthless, so. I bet if I... Well, this is New Game Plus. I bet stats and stuff probably carry over. So this might be a New Game Plus option. Count on that. I can't promise anything, but I'll keep your words in mind. Well, we can't promise anything. A fair answer. Yep, that's what I thought too. Then if you're ready, you should introduce yourself to Matriarch Zuna Zauvant of Zanaska. Hug your mother. No, I'd take the same pets as Let's hug. Aw. I'll miss you, Mom. I know. We'll miss you, too. Aw. Your mother's embrace was stiff, but it was not without love. It means a whole lot to me. I know. You know I'm no good at this sort of thing. Thank you for indulging your daughter. Go on now. Shouldn't keep her waiting. You both pulled apart. You offered her a kind smile and a nod as you backed away and slowly turned to face the stairs. The guard has already returned and she is waiting for you at the top of the stairway. Are you ready? Lead the way. I gotta admit, the main character has a really sweet hat. As you follow behind the guard, you begin to notice that it was taking longer to reach Juno's location than for the guard to leave and retrieve you. How did you get back to the lobby so fast? Cute. So this will all be mine soon, or stay quiet. Let's just stay quiet. After another two minutes of walking, you finally reach a pair of closed double doors. Lady Zuna Zauvent is inside. She opened the right door and gestured inside. Please head inside. Will do. Ooh. Welcome to my establishment, child. Take a seat. We have much to discuss. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, Jenna, did you accept my invitation to become an apprentice of your own accord? That is a sweet view. What do you mean? I'm not here by choice. Yes. Yes, we did. Good, it will be your own ambition that gets you through these next few months, especially if you plan to earn my seat. I want you to know that when I walk away from my title, I expect my heir to sustain, if not elevate, what I leave behind. Therefore, you will be competing against five other apprentices so that I may determine who is most worthy. For the next six months, I will observe how you spend your time here in my castle. There is no schedule for you to adhere to while you stay here. I have no time nor intention of holding your hand. You may study, train, and engage in your own hobbies and continue pursuing your own social and political agendas. You may make use of my library, my combat trainer, and the instructors I have provided for you to study under. Do not harass my staff or waste their time, but you may speak with them if you feel their insight may enlighten you somehow. I may, however, choose to delegate some of my own tasks to you, and I expect you to perform them with the dignity befitting of the title. All you need to know is that when I decide who the new matriarch will be, she will be the most qualified. Do you understand, child? Yes. Oh, it's time. Time choices sometimes. Then you are dismissed. Liz, the door opened behind you. The guard who brought you here stepped inside. Liz will guide you to your quarters. Your belongings will be sent to your room. The moment the airship you are on clears them for delivery. <clears throat> Zuna gently motioned her right middle and index finger in a gesture that told you she expected you to leave. Alrighty. It took several minutes for the guard Liz to lead you to your room. We used the time to process what Zuna just told you. You hadn't been sure what to expect coming here. Zuna was never going to make a competition for her title of some gaudy public spectacle. But somehow this seemed unusually cryptic, even for her. She expected you to prove yourself with your decisions, but she gave you no inclination as to what decisions would lead her to choose you or not. Was Zuna a woman who favors strength or cleverness, ruthlessness or kindness? Or was she looking for something else altogether? You sensed that further investigation was in order. At last, you arrived at your room. The room didn't seem too far away from the lobby and it was connected to the hall leading to Zuna's office. 
Here we are, my lady. Okay, I have some questions. I doubt I can answer them, but I'll do my best. I like this beautiful stuff. What thing you got going on? Want to grab a meal? <laughs> this lady's not always so to the point. Why, do you have a problem with that? Don't answer. I have to report back to her. She eyed the hallway, clearly wanting to leave. But you're correct. Yes, she is not one for games. Liz gave you a small nod and walked back down to the hallway, leaving you to your new room. Well, thought I could answer, ask a little more pertinent question, but that's okay. The airship right is an ask. It was a long one, and your eyes grew heavy. You found yourself wanting to enter the world of dreams. Get some sleep. That's bad. When you open your eyes, you notice you were in front of a church. You didn't quite understand how you got there. The situation felt familiar all the same. Only the wind in your own feet could be heard as you walked up to the stairs and quietly stepped inside. Only one person could be seen within. A woman. As she was standing right in front of you, blocking you from further entry. Fucking with causality, were we? What? Who are you? Well, were you? I was? <coughs> oh. <coughs> your eyes jolted open. Despite feeling your life inch away from you moments before, you appeared no worse than usual. Every time you recalled the woman who so coldly attacked you, the name Mara came to mind. You decided the best thing to do was to get up and move forward, hoping that no such dream would ever occur again. Well, I hope not. You opened your door and saw a woman leaning on the wall opposite of you. It seemed she was waiting for you to come out. Or you were just out here the whole time, really? Well, I wasn't gonna, but then my thoughts wandered, you know? Her name is Axe. Her yours was Jenna. And don't worry, I wasn't here that long. That'd be creepy if you were. You guys can say that would have been weird. Ah, here you there. Some of us overheard that guard talking to her subordinates. As they were walking by, we caught wind that most of the academic and government buildings will permit a sentry while we're considered apprentice matriarchs. Seems like an important detail to let you in on. Oh, you know, she didn't mention it. Funny. But, yes, that was important. Thank you. Ah, oh, she's happy. Look at her smile. Ain't no problem. Nice meeting you. Hope we cross paths soon. Well, in a good way. And I guess it's kind of obvious we'll be seeing each other soon. I should probably exit the conversation before I fuck it up. Bye bye she left at a leisurely pace. You decided it was time to depart as well. The rest of the cycle still remained, but not much had been revealed on what action to take and how. All there was to do was to explore and find out. Explore the castle more. Soon as castle still had an overwhelming number of rooms to discover, so you turned back to explore more. However, you had no idea where you would go from here. But it was until two large doors opened wide and inviting, revealed the next notable room. The closer you got to it, the more uncomfortable you became. Ooh, library? Standing by one of the nearest bookshelves was a woman who wasted no time eyeing you as you came in. It's her. I bet Nirzala was terrified of coming here, yet you did anyway. Is your name Mara? So you were able to remember that much, hmm? Have we met before? No, not outside that little head of yours. So you do know about my ability? Well, what's left of it? What? If you could still communicate with your Zawa, it would tell you that we've met before in one of our calculations. One of your calculations. Then I'd be at a disadvantage because you know, you know the exact way to get what you want, but no more. You're stuck with only the memories of this loop. Huh? But why? How? Even then, you still tried to create a scenario where the equation was reset, didn't you? And that might have worked for some other people, you know. It might have even worked on your own memories. But it won't work on me. I probably told your Zawa this time and time again, but you can't find a loophole to pull the cloth over my eyes. Fuck with fate, and I will find out. Then I'll end you on the spot. With a brief chuckling grin, Mara walked past you and out of the library. Ah, uh, we gotta go after her. We can do this anytime. You turned away from the library and entered the hall, hoping to stop the woman who dem demand answers. However, she was no longer anywhere in sight. Damn it. I figured she'd do something cool like that. Alright, let's go back to the library and find a book to read. It's not like there's no shortage of books here. 
You ever do that? You ever go to like the library and just pick a book at random and read it? I've done that before. It's kind of fun. Hmm. It wasn't long before you realized most of the Lady Zuna's books were based on the art of fighting, murder, and law. The law books are important, you know, when you're doing all this murder and you want to figure out how you can get out of it. All the same, you felt what you did, what you did read helped you understand fighting a little better. Oh, good. I'm sorry to disturb you, Lady Jenna. Oh, you're good. I was just about to leave. What's up? Lady Zuna requests you to join Lady Velvet in delivering a letter to Major Agvina. He's only a few hours away from Zanaska. Only a few hours. I'm betting she didn't provide any reason either. Well, I guess get to it. Are we taking airship or Dragoon? Airship. I believe his Lady Zuna wants you all to personally tame a beast of your own before she considers travel by wings. Fair enough. Lead the way. Ooh. You finally arrived at the airship docking station. A woman who presumably was Velvet was already there waiting to board. She waved at you, just a small motion with her hand. A light blue hieroglyphic appeared on the ground, yards away from the waiting airship. Velvet was first to step on it, vanishing moments after. Ooh, that's cool. You followed behind, and in no time at all, you were inside the airship lobby. As you walked towards one of the nearest chairs, you saw Velvet take a letter from the flight attendant. And here's the letter. She's pretty. They're all pretty. Oh, yeah, everyone looks so good in this game. All right, let's go meet this Vina. You two sat down across from one another. So, uh, any ideas? Afraid not. Feel free to open the seal and read the letter for me, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious about the letter. Maybe we can ask Lady Zuna about it once we turn to Zanaska. And you thought I cared about talking with you, how? Oh, that's just a jerk one. We don't want to do that. Nah, I don't feel like we should open the letter. That seems, you know, if it's for someone else, you know, like curiosity is obviously there, but man. Let's not open the letter. I just might, yeah, I suppose it depends on what kind of person Vina's like. Hope she's nice. So if she's shitty, you're gonna ask Lady Zuna about her? Well, if she's that bad, I just might have to do something about it then and there. What? Well, question. You're not going to do anything rash if Vina is a less than stellar individual, are you? She seems like she's a joker type. Probably. Oh, yeah, maybe not. So what instincts do you have them? I'm a work in progress. The fact that you're laughing about it, though. Talking about something interesting. That's the vibe I felt over here in YouTube. There's a lot of characters in this game. There's like... A lot. Like 12, I think. 12 romantic characters, I believe. Oh yeah, by the way, I'll link all this stuff on the Steam store. You can play it. For, I don't think it's free. It's just $20, I believe. I don't know if there's a demo. I don't think there is. But yeah. The woman took her seat across from the two of you. My name is Zaname. It's an insufferably boring trip if you're flying alone, so I'm hoping you two won't mind keeping me company for a few minutes. Piss off. Depends if you have something useful to contribute. This is more like... This is more like ruthless. This is more like cunning, I guess. I don't know. No trouble, though. We're not like that, though. Yeah, it can't hurt. Where are you headed? Oh, Ramash. I thought she's just gonna say Rabbit Aster. I'm like, oh my god, Final Fantasy 12. Airships. Right on. I have a friend waiting for me there. Be careful. I think that's Zupo territory. Should I know about them? Should I? A dangerous family protected and run by a matriarch. I hear they were very liberal about who they kill and why. Huh. At least it's transparent. Hmm. <laughs> I like their style. Yeah, I do like their style. Why? I mean, I can get not having patience to deal with someone diplomatically, but to just kill someone without much thought? Well, she's people like that. Up there in your way, sure. The very callous outlook, Jenna. Oh, you're right. Though I too can get behind it, with some differences. You know, minus the killing. What? I wouldn't kill just anyone I didn't like or agree with. But I do understand some people are poisonous to the prosperity of Zal. You almost sound like you think uh, some people are more valuable than others. I mean, let's be realistic here. 
That is absolutely true. But they are. Zillion value, human value. It's all quite romanticized, isn't it? No person, they're inferior and they'll protest because we as a species place inherent value on both ourselves and what we can give to the world. What well, natural. But what's natural isn't always right. It doesn't define the truth. For example, if all lives are truly equal, then why do we take freedom from criminals? Uh, maybe because they're criminals, people that lost their right to harm the innocent? So, would it be fair to say there's already a bit of a gray area in your otherwise staunch beliefs? You can't mention exceptions you think that contradicts the point. That would be dull, yes. I'm not focusing on whether the rejection of such outliers is wrong or right. I mean, it is wrong, to be sure, but such semantics are for bores. What I'm suggesting is that there's already a precedent. A precedent yet you yourself agree with on some level. You know, Velvet star stared at clenching her fists. Zanane took a notice of it, but quickly refocused her eyes on Velvet. Annoying, isn't it? And that's one thing. Hang on, let me check something. Let me go back. Yeah, see, this is wrong. This is her name. That's a typo. That's okay with all these weird names. Yeah, it's bound to slip up soon. That's okay, then. I'm sure that'll be ironed out. Annoying, isn't it? That's one thing I envy about humans. They can lie and lie repeatedly at will with nary a trace of fun function. We zillions, however, we aren't able to tell even a mere emotional lie, even if it means we have to stay silent. Since the truth feels so much worse, then we must speak it aloud. The human concept of hypocrisy is wholly unfamiliar to us. That we might say one thing, but act in a manner otherwise, is an idea we zillions would consider nonsensical, if not outright baffling. We simply can't do it. Alas, Zillions cannot deny their true natures, regardless of how wise or misguided they may be. So, what, uh, you just killed someone you thought was beneath you? That's a silly use of one sign. Now, ask me to put down the drain on society to save someone act actively elevating it? And who are you to decide which of us is more worth than the other? You can go straight to hell, but you're basing... Your entire belief on how you perceive reality, the universe itself supports no such truth. Stay silent on this one. That's just foolish. What about those who need help or those who will be of value later? Potential is a dubious quantifier, but I'd like to assume one could tell when to preserve a life and when one is bringing emotions to into decisions. So what if they do? You think Dodge will never control people decide to take care of each other. Hmm. Now as anime, if it comes out you're nothing but a burden to society, would you still be so inclined to say all of this? Of course. The best way to embrace the Strauss principle is to adopt the philosophy that we should do all we can to better us all. Though I doubt I have anything to fear, I myself am subject to my own beliefs. If the time comes where I need to put down my life to save my betters or even just elevate them, I'll make my peace with it. Easy to say for someone probably living a lofty life far from the suffering of others. Velvet stood up from her seat. I bet you wouldn't even help a crying child if you thought she would make any difference. Well, I suppose you were bound to be right about something in this cycle. Okay. Before anyone could tell otherwise, Velvet, without reservation, threw a punch straight at the bridge of Zaname's nose. Careful. Ow. Velvet's hand had stopped a few inches in front of Zaname's face and was now embedded in the wall of pink translucent Zawa surrounding her. Frustrated. I noticed you were getting agitated, so I prepped my Zawa for whatever you were going to throw at me. I was expecting an elemental spell, but let me just say I can respect a woman willing to go fist first into a situation. Drop your damn shield! I think not. It was only meant to deflect the blow. I didn't take you as someone strong enough to get your fist stuck inside. All the same, I'm not looking at I'm not looking at gift Zergoon in its mouth. Let her go before I beat the hell out of you. Yeah, I'm not helping you out of this velvet vote promises not just hack. Ah, please let her go. How about a velvet? I see no reason to exhaust her as all any further if you don't. Whatever. 
Good call. Definitely got under velvet skin there. Dynamite shield combusted into small sparkling red dust particles that snuffed themselves out before hitting the ground. After a moment's pause, Velvet backed away to her former seat. I look absolutely devastated. I wouldn't put that much stock into my words. Or your inability to harm me. Chances are we'll never see each other again, so I'm trying to think of this as a learning experience. Say what you want. I'm one of Lainey's and his apprentices, and if I inherit her title, you can bet that I'll have laws preventing you from sacrificing the innocent for the greater good. Uh, Velvet? What? Budgie matriarchs. Let's see now. Well, I hope it doesn't come to that, though. I would hate to see progress throttled in such a way. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen and ladies. We will soon be arriving at Ramastra. Our next stop after that will be Hickory Island. If you are departing, please make sure you have all your belongings and prepare to depart via XD device. It will look identical to the hieroglyphic you used to board earlier. We will be arriving at Hickory Island in less than 45 minutes. Thank you for riding Zamora Airlines. Well, looks like that's my cue. It was a pleasure talking to you too. Maybe I'll have to be fulfilling. Both looked at her hand. The cuts and blood had vanished entirely. Damn that woman. Despite the journey to Hickory being more stressful than intended, the duration of the trip was calm and visiting the matriarch Vina was almost disappointingly mundane. The letter only asked if Zuna could buy some dragoons for you and the other apprentices. Vina was more than willing to tell you two the set details without being prompted, so there's no need to read the letter. The ride back to Zanasco was a quiet one. I was going to crash into the building. That would have been funny. After you and Velvet parted ways, you began heading back to your room, feeling the urge to sleep returning. Whoa, what is that hair? I'm kind of digging it. You must be Jenna. Who are you? Am I puppy already? Oh no, nothing like that. You're just the only one I haven't met yet. Name's Marixa. An interesting name. I kinda dig it. You are one of the candidates, right? How did it go with Lady Zuna? Rudimentary, I suppose I overthought the meeting. I'm sure you're not the only one. I just got back and was headed for bed. What brings you to the lobby? Are you my surroundings? I never went. I never want to be asked to go somewhere and not know how to get there, you know? How'd your ship go? Smoothly, if you ignore the woman we met on the way to Hickory. In our line of work, it's best to ignore the small fry. Wouldn't leave her alone for too long, honestly. Ignoring you would be rude, though. Oh, <laughs> that would be such a jerk one. Yeah, you're right. Far too many things, other things to focus on than worry about that airship ride. Go more right than you know. But I won't keep you. We can talk later. Smosky University should be open to us in a few hours. Catch me there if you end up dropping by. Sleep well. After Marixa walked away, you decided it was best to head for bed before the drowsiness became worse. Well, our dream returned. Just as you entered your room and started walking towards the bed, you heard footsteps in the hallway passing by your door. I'm curious now. Actually, I heard your door open right away and spun around. Yo! Oh, hey! Isn't it kind of late to be walking about? It's never late when it's me. I mean, hey, don't even have quicker cycles? Maybe my internal clock is synced up with their 24-hour cycle. <laughs> Want to come to my room then? Maybe you'll get some sleep if you have company. Silly poof, get some sleep soon. And Axe was last seen falling down the stairs because she was too tired. <laughs> She'd like that. Fair. I'll tell you what. I'll try to get some sleep in a bit, all right? Just feeling a bit antsy at the moment. All right, but don't think I won't give you a hard time if I wake up and find you got zero sleep. I'll keep that in mind. Well, later. You watch her place her hands in her pockets and throw off without looking back. There's nothing left to do but head to bed. And at long last, you were able to lie down. Daylight did not deter your urge to close your eyes and drift off to sleep. Ah, ooh, this is nice. Bit fantasy land, but I kind of like it. Who are those people? I was wondering when you'd show up. Were you impressed by any of them? They're green. Very green. 
I suspect each and every one of them are in for some hard lessons. And what of you? Will you be ready? Hmm. That was interesting. The knocking woke you up from your vision. You there? I mean, physically? Good, get ready, you're training this cycle. Uh, oh, no I'm not. <laughs> Be right there. Good. Meet the others at the dock. We'll leave for my farm in 15 minutes farm. You heard footsteps trailing off into the distance. It appeared a good portion of your cycle had just been claimed. Training, huh? Hmm. With a sigh, you forced yourself out of bed and made your way to the lobby. As you walked down the hallway, it didn't take long before you noticed a conversation going on a few yards away. Liz was facing away from you, looking directly into the eyes of the other. Afraid so, Lady Clemmies. I would not defy the woman were I in your shoes. I see. And as you were, Liz nodded her head. Lady Clannis. Liz walked past Lazy Clannis, neither one bothering to look at the other as she did. Lady Zunazawa went of Zaneska. Whatever are you playing at? Footsteps from behind you caught you both by surprise. The individual nodded their head as they walked by you. Lady Jenna? Without breaking stride, he did the same to Clannis. Lady Clannis? Clannis moved her head towards him ever so slightly, her interest seeming to fade as soon as it had arrived. She looked back at you. Training. What bother? My time would be better spent elsewhere, yet here I, here I, or rather we, stand, indulging the whims of some teacher we weren't even privileged to know the name of. Rubbish. Could be worse. An Easterner, complaining. <laughs> Gonna be hard to act surprised. Fuck, you're hot when you speak. Fuck it, let's do it. This I cannot deny. Ah, she knows. She knows it. She knows she's hot. I didn't believe I'd meet anyone here with an appreciative appreciative ear for Eastern vernacular. Oh, yes, I'm basically waiting to see all the ways you react to something at this point. Well, then keep close to me and see your patience rewarded. Just be sure not to succumb to the many follies we be met with, or you may find my words turning against you swift as the wind. But we're short on time. Shall we go? We shall. When you reached the lobby, you saw Zuna standing in the room, watching the other apprentices walking out to the airship docking station. After watching you and Clinice leave the castle, she walked out shortly after, with Liz closing the doors behind you all. It took no time at all for you to all teleport into the airship and begin the flight to the farm. Why can't we just teleport to the farm? Why do we need airships if we have teleporters? Maybe it's like short range? So you're telling me that after she hammered, hammered all, on all our doors and woke us up, very rudely at that, she had the damn nerve to leave Anna's Ragoon. You looked over at Zuna, who was standing in front of a window with her hands interlocked behind her back, watching the clouds go by. She was a ways away, but there was a chance she could hear the conversation clearly enough. And I suppose she has her reasons. Yeah, huh? From the moment she starts this training of hers, I'm going to d deck her in the scars. I don't think that's a real word. Sorry, I should introduce myself. Nox of Exus. And they really like to use the X's. I like that. Nice to meet you. I'm Velvet. This person does not have an X in her name, and I'm a little disappointed. Why didn't I see you earlier? I was preoccupied with some preliminary work. Man, everyone looks so nice. It's okay, the hat's the best part, though. Let me know if you need a guide around the castle. I spent the majority of the cycle getting to know the place, so you'd be in good hands. I really hope you got some sleep. Fighting will be hell for you otherwise. I got a little bit. Please tell me we, we have a healer on board. I know some healing spells. That will be having much fun if I end up needing to use them, though. Speaking of, why don't you join us, Clanice? And she also doesn't have an her name. Clanice was sitting close by, and although it seemed she was paying attention, Nothing about her demeanor suggested she was thinking of joining the conversation. It's scarce fun to be had indulging a placement test. Aw, I'll just try to think of it as a way to show off what you've got. 
I rather would impress those who judge by wisdom and not strength. Words I can get behind. I'm not cut out for fighting either. Am I the only one here who's had actual experience fighting? Nah, I've been through my fair share. And what of a lawyer? Dipped your toes in a bit of bloodshed on your way to the top? Now, why would I... We've arrived. Oh, she's here. I didn't know she was here. Everyone fell silent the instant they heard Zuna's voice. Zuna motioned her head, and everyone immediately knew what it meant. Get off my airship. One by one, each of you teleported to the ground below. Zuna included. No one seemed sure of what to expect. Not even me. The narrator. Listen here, you sorry sight of scrawny schoolgirls. The name's Yaxata. Let's make one thing clear this cycle. You may call me by my name. You can call me tough, an ass bastard, piece of shit, insane, a monster. Whatever you need to say to make this fresh slice of hell a little more manageable. Oh boy. While you're on silent, you will not fight to kill, and you most certainly will not take your frustration out on my Zergoons. To even come close to beating me will be a miracle for you will level meat shields, but the only way to officially graduate from these training grounds will be to better yourselves from the sorry state that is your present existence. Huh, tell us how you really feel. You may of course refuse to come back after this cycle, but I will report your progress to the matriarch. Take that as you will. So all I have to do is come close to beating you the cycle and I'm done here. Do we always have to come here together? Ooh, look at that. Oops, that's a safe, safe function. Now, show me what you brittle bunch of bastards are capable of. About time, because you're pissing me off. Azuna watching from behind, Velvet was first to charge for the Yakuzata. Hey, don't just... You don't just charge at your enemy. You don't know what they can do. Funniest is shouting and distracted you from seeing how Velvet ended up crashing right in front of the group again. Tumbling, even. That... Don't, don't just do, do that. As Velvet picked herself back up, knocks you aside. Obviously, her boasts are not without merit. Please consider your actions more carefully. This ain't a turn-based dance, girls. Get over here and do your worst. Make me come over there and you'll all regret it. Now, nah, shit, she's legit. I may have a plan if you all care to indulge it. Despite Quinesis' plan to utilize everyone's strengths in unison, Everyone just found themselves kissing dirt and without any effort from Ixada. Not a single drop of sweat could be seen on her. Before long, the training session was over, and there was only one thing left to do. Complain. Don't beat yourself up over it. Your plan was sound. Conceptually, anyway. I'll just lack the strength to execute it. Some of you lack the Izawa needed to be helpful at all. Jeez, oh, that's a little harsh. You'll have plenty of opportunities to try this again. Just make sure you learn something every time, understood? This world is filled with dangers and terrors, and every last one of you are ripe for the slaughter. I'm sure that hasn't happened. Excited left for the hieroglyphic before being teleported back to her farm. The airship began moving toward the castle shortly after. I knew I was ill prepared to fight, but to this degree? At least you have an excuse. Oh, shit happens, so they say. I'm so tired. However, I suppose you would have no, had no trouble continuing with the Exata, Lady Zuna. Zuna had been standing over by a window, looking at nothing in particular with her hands behind her back. The matriarch moved her head to look at all of you with an ambiguous demeanor. No. She turned her attention back to the clouds. No trouble at all. Got a long way to go. Nothing else was said during the trip back to the castle. Well, I think that's going to do it for Women of Zal. You can check it right now out right now on Steam. Cost of $20, but it seems to be very well put together. It's currently in early access, being developed on, but I was told that a developer, you can play this game to completion and get a de default ending. So, you know, there's a storyline here. And obviously when you buy it, you will have access to the full game whenever it releases. So with that being said, I will see you all next time. And have a good day.